Uh, do you see uh, incidences of or, or that, that stress from any source, especially family dynamics, can increase uh, the probability of cancers? I f I'm very resistant to this idea uh, myself uh, for several reasons, um, and I have gotten myself into enormous trouble for saying this, but I think it's correct. Um, I think there is a, in, with, with cancer especially, um, the idea of blaming the victim is a very old idea, particularly in women's cancers. Uh, and, the, and, and to say to someone, the reason you have cancer is because you were stressed or depressed, essentially reinvents to me the medieval idea of blaming the victim. Um, the woman with breast cancer already has enough on her plate. You know, she doesn't need to be told that the reason she, go, she got cancer was because she was stressed or depressed. We've actually studied this somewhat. Um, it would be useful to have a whiff of evidence such as populations where there's a huge amount of systemic stress having higher rates of cancer. Uh, there would be useful to have a whiff of evidence from, for instance, large registries of, of, uh, that follow people with depression, really chronic depression. And that evidence has just not been convincing. Uh, it has not been convincing. Now, it's absolutely true that your psyche, your mental state, has very much to do with the process by which you heal. But everyone's process is different. I know as many people with the, with the most positive spirits who have died of cancer, and I know many, many people who have had the most negative attitude and who still survive. So. Oh, it's very preliminary. And uh, alternatives such as vitamins without getting too much antioxidant or herbals like uh, turmeric and other things, how much can that come into play to at least prolonging, if not curing such an illness? Well, you know, the, we've talked a little bit about alternative medicine. I mean, in general, I think intelligent uh, chemists and scientists have to be agnostic about alternative medicine. All our medicines were alternative until they became traditional. Uh, our pharmacopoeia comes from plants primarily still today. That said, has there been an enormous, uh, has there, have there been enormous discoveries in cancer medicine and treatment that have come from this so-called alternative medicine world? I'm not sure, I'm not convinced yet. My only plea to every community, whether it be traditional or alternative medicine, is that we have to have the same metrics, otherwise our language begins to degenerate. We need to have a language that's common, and that is we know how to run trials, we know how to judge metrics, and so my plea is let's bring all of those. Now, in particular to gallbladder cancers, you know, this has been a struggle for, I would say, decades now, and really nothing significant has worked. We need a completely different way of thinking about delivering medicines to gallbladder and pancreatic cancer. And you wouldn't be surprised that, you know, you go outside, there is a, pancreatic cancer is, lies at the very front of all investigations. Uh, that from the National Cancer Institute right up to every single advocacy organization is saying, let's make an example, let's turn pancreatic cancer around. But thus far, not very much has worked. And Surgery. And liver and kidney. Liver and kidney, yeah, similarly. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you.